this is algebra two, chapter 1.1, .1, domain, range, and behavior. Homework and practice. This video lessons will be associated with the exercises, exercise set one through 10. And specifically, I'm gonna be working out half of these problems. I think the ones we're gonna be working out are gonna be one, four, five, eight, and nine. So I'll leave it to the viewer to work out the remainder in this set. Okay, one, write the interval shown on the number line as an inequality using set notation and using interval notation. Here we have our number line notation and our inequality notation. We look, we see five being the critical number and X is represented by what is in the direction and content of where the arrow is pointed. So we can write that inequality notation as X is greater than five. And is that all there is to it? No, it is not because we have this number five included by virtue of this filled in circle. And so our, the entirety of our inequality notation for this representation of the number line is this. Next, a set notation. Our set notation is very similar to the inequality notation. So that's why when you have to do set notation, it's convenient to work out inequality notation first. So we put an opening bracket in the X vertical line segment such that, let's see if I can get that a little more vertical appearing. That's a little better. X, that's such that X is greater than or equal to five. And then we put our surrounding bracket like this. And there we have it. Uh, lastly, interval notation. Interval notation, we're going to use uh, brackets and parentheses. In this case, we are starting out with X equals five. So we put a a uh, angular bracket here, square bracket, and we put five. And this represents that we are starting at five, and then we put a comma, and we go up toward infinity. But do we include infinity as part of answer? No, we don't. And so we close off with the parentheses. And so this, these are our answers representing our notations as asked for. Okay, next, we're going to go to number four. Yeah, okay. Or write the interval x such that x is between three and five is inequality in the interval notation. Well, inequality notation, we can just piece this out of the set notation. So inequality notation is simply negative three is less than x and x is less than five. And there we have it. That is going to be our inequality notation. Very simple. Interval notation, uh, we have less than, less than. And so we are looking at interval with parentheses, three on five. So that is it. Okay, next we're going to go to five. Five three eight. Write the domain and range of the function as an inequality in set notation, interval notation. Also describe the end behavior of the function or explain why there is no end behavior. Here we have a quadratic function, the graph of it shown, and domain and range. So we're going to start out with our domain. And for domain, I'm just going to put a D colon. And in quality notation, the domain of a quadratic function is all real numbers. In the inequality notation, that looks something like this. All real numbers. Now, in the book, they use like plus infinity 
But as you go on, you may not see plus infinity at the right. That is going to be our, our interval notation, not interval, inequality notation. Our set notation is going to be brackets x such that x is greater than negative infinity, yet less than positive infinity. And I will mention that in set notation, you'll see variations. I'm going to put this in the upper right. You can see that as x such that x is this sideways e thing here is an element. And I'm just trying to get you ready for if you get ambushed by this on some kind of a standardized test. I want you to at least have seen it at some point in your math career. Okay. And this kind of script R, that's, that represents all real numbers. X such that X is an element of all real numbers. And lastly, interval notation. Interval notation is going to be just like we've done uh, previously. Okay. We, we have greater than negative infinity, comma, infinity. In this case, out of respect for what the book is doing, I put it this way. So that's going to be our domain. And our range, and I'm going to color code this. I'm going to go to a range being in red. Our range is not going to be the same range. We're starting out at x equals 2, or at y equals 2. So range, we say, y is greater than or equal to 2, but less than But I got that wrong backwards. There we go. Greater than or equal to two, but less than infinity. Okay. And our our uh, set notation is going to be y such that y is greater than or equal to 2. Now in this case, we didn't actually have to put infinity in here, so it's not, it doesn't have to be exactly the same. And interval notation is going to be, we start at 2 and we bracketize that 2 because 2 is included in the range and then we go up toward infinity which we can describe as pause infinity and we seal with parentheses also uh, let's see describe the end behavior okay now the way we've done this in this book is this as x approaches pause infinity okay comma f of x our output value as as x goes towards pause infinity what does the output value do well output value is going to go up so f of x approaches pause infinity That is going to be our one of our end behaviors. And then we'll go the other direction as x approaches to negative infinity, f of x approaches. That arrow signifies approaches. Also positive infinity. We go this direction with x y direction will go up. So we likewise have pause infinity. 
So uh, these would be our our answers. Get that little little bit better box looking here if I can. Know what it is with this thing. Okay, there it is. I said eight and nine also. So here's six, same type of thing, seven, eight. Okay, the graph of a function is shown. We're going to be looking at domain, range, and end behavior. So our domain, I put D colon. We are in First, inequality notation, we're going between negative 4 and positive 4. So we have x is greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to 4. And in set notation, we have open bracket x such that Same thing in this case is inequality notation, right? Close bracket. In interval notation, we have brackets because these endpoints are included. So we're going between negative four to four. You can really see here how Interval notation is quite a decent abbreviation. Now, according to, to uh, custom here, I'm going to use R in red. So our range is going to be, now our range is going to go between Y equals 0 and 4. So this is a, a semicircle. So you have range 0 is less than or equal to Y. And y is less than or equal to 4. And then our step notation, very similar, y such that y, well, I'm going to have to port it off. Okay, we're going to put 0 less than or equal to y, y is less than or equal to 4. And then close off the bracket. Okay, so pretty simple. And our interval notation is going to be opening bracket, lowest value, 0, comma, 4. And 4 is included in the range, and so we bracket the high value, 2. And so uh, that's it. Now for end behavior, it says uh, as, I'm just going to start writing, as x approaches infinity, f of x, question mark. Okay, the question I have for you is, does x approach infinity? No, it is not. Nor does x approach negative infinity, because instead of going to infinity, we go just to negative 4 on one side, the left side, and positive 4 on the right side. So we say since x does not approach It doesn't approach plus or minus infinity. What do we conclude? There is no in behavior. You got to be approaching infinity there to be in behavior. 
Okay. The last one we'll do in the video here is number nine. And this comes from exercise set nine and ten. For a given function domain, draw the graph and identify the range using the same notation as the given domain. And here we're given a domain of x between negative three and two. And so what we're going to do first, we're going to plug in these values. So I'm going to take f of negative three and plug that in here. So for that we get negative. And I'm going to put in parentheses here, this negative 3. And so when you replace in there, I recommend if you have a, a variable to replace, just put a parentheses, and then you can just insert that value inside the parentheses. It really helps avoid mistakes. Plus 5. And so we have negative negative 3, which is positive 3, plus 5. So that's going to be 8. So we go up to... Uh, f of negative 3 equals 8. Well, so we go up here, draw the graph. I don't have one have room on this graph, do we? So here's 6, here's negative 3, here's 6, here's 8. So it's going to be up here someplace, right in the middle of the text. Sorry about that. Okay, next we're going to go put f of 2 to find the other endpoint equals negative, okay, and then we put a parentheses here, plus 5. And then we're just going to put 2 right in here. So we get negative 2 plus 5 equals 3. So f of 2 is going to equal 3. And we know we have a, a point here, and not, a, not an open point because we have these brackets. And let's go ahead and put our, uh, we just can connect these with a line. A line segment. And there we have it. Probably our, probably our y-intercept here is going to be 5. Yeah. Well, let's do that just, just for consistency's sake here. We know we're going to have a y-intercept of 5. Why is that? Because of this function here, this equation. So we go through our y-intercept of 5 on our way to this whole thing. So that's what it looks like. Okay, it says, uh, and identify the range. So what is our range going to be? And our range is given our domain is given an interval notation, so we're going to get our range in, in uh, interval notation 2. And we are starting at 3 and going up to 8. So our range is going to be this interval here from 3 to 8. Now in, in domain and in range not in interval notation, you really have to to do something to identify, here I put this big R colon to identify that we're talking about range. So we have, we have found our range here, and that's it. And I hope you can do the rest of these. Good luck, and thanks for viewing.